Cool. Okay, so we're here in Manchester, United Kingdom. I'm here with Jake from Millennium Machines. Because there's a new Milo or an upgrade. It's a there's, cool... there's two Milos. Two Milos. Yes. That's more than one Milo. That's yes. even better. So, Jake, what's new with the Milo? And if you don't know what the Milo is, it's a CNC. So, first things first, why don't we show them what old Milo looks like over there? So, over there is my old personal Milo. Uh, that's what we released last year at Smurf. This year, we're actually releasing two revisions of v2 so if you don't know how uh, our version wor versions work here at millennium every time we do a major iteration so v2 v3 it's a complete redesign from the bottom up so follow me this way we have two machines here that we're going to show you the first is miley so miley v2 shares the same y-axis and z-axis as milo v2 which is in the enclosure but the x-axis has changed the idea behind that is that in the same kit, in the same LDO kit or FISEC kit or whatever, all you would need to have to make one machine or the either is an extra belt, a couple of fasteners, and a couple of changes to the 3D printed parts, right? And there are some benefits to having one or the other. For Miley, because it's the plate that moves, the actual fixated plate that moves, you're gonna have a much, much, uh, much more rigid setup. It's gonna be much easier to take big cuts all the time, but you get the drawback of having a reduced x-axis width. So you go from 350 on Milo to 310 on Miley. So the big difference here, so for on, on the original one here, the whole axis moves left to right. But on this one, this this doesn't move. Just the bed moves on the rails now, yep. right? Okay. Yep. Uh, so if you, this Milo over here also has the whole table. Now, if you have the whole table that moves, it means that you have two dead zones on the side to bolt things down to. If you wanted to put a tool changer down, if you wanted to put um, a tool setter or a fourth axis, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, right? We might be doing one. I don't know just yet, right? Uh, we've also added way covers to the Y-axis. A big complaint that we had was that the chips were getting stuck in the uh, C-beams quite a lot. And each one of these way covers, there's one at the back and one at the front, is completely magnetic. So you can take it off, oh. clean all your chips out, stick it back on, and there you go. So this, this just come on with magnets. Yeah, nice. We've increased the width of the Z-axis, so that means we can take a we can we can build into it a wider Y-axis. So on the V1.5, it was 160 millimeters on Y. On the V2, it's going to be 200 millimeters on Y. Uh, for Milo, like I said, 350x. For Miley, 310x. Technically, you get less Z travel on Miley, but that's because the plate is already installed on it. Whereas if you had the plate installed on Milo, it would still be the same. But if okay. you, you have the option of taking the plate off on Milo and getting that extra 10 mil back. So on the original one, you're essentially measuring off of the deck, where on the new one, you're now measuring off of the, the bed itself. The bed itself, yeah. Okay. And the idea behind that was because a lot of the kits that we were seeing were coming with fixated plates anyway. So we might as well have designed it into those features into the plate and giving okay. you those options of the two. There's also the option of now having either your standard TR8 lead screw, right? Or uh, 0802 ball screws. Oh, so we have ball screws yes. now. So, ball screws have the advantage of being easy to install, they run really cool, but they have a really low lead angle or pitch. I always forget the so two. So it's not going to be fast. It's not going to be fast, right? Um, and each block is, in, is um, can be used on any axis. So you can mix, you can uh, chop and change. You can have a Z axis that's ball screw and a Y axis that's a lead screw and then go back to a ball screw on the X axis. You can choose what you want to build. And that comes with a load of, of benefits. On each axis, we now have a more industrial setup. So what we have is a, a stationary floating design for the bearings. So thrust bearings on the stationary side, and those will take the linear movement and, and constrain it linearly. And then the floating bearings are actually oversized so that they can expand for thermal, to compensate for thermal expansion. Nice. And are we still using the same spindle and what? Same spindle, same VFD that came with um, LDO. Because okay. 
the 220 version is pretty good. I'm not too sure what the 110 version is like. Yeah, I have the 220. Yeah, so. the 220. The yeah. 220 is really good because it's not hard to install 220 in your household in North America if you know what you're doing. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, one of the big, big changes is we've moved away from 3D printer boards instead of uh, yes. if, in lieu of um, actually having our own CNC boards. Yeah. So we work with BTT to develop Scylla. So Scylla runs 2160s, so you have a, an RMS current of I think is 4.7 amps, peak current of around 6 amps. So we're finally actually running our motors at the rated currents rather than undercurrenting them. Okay. We've, it also comes with the ability to change voltage on them. So you can actually run your motors on a separate input up to 60 volts, oh, nice. which really, really improves the speed of these machines. Uh, I currently don't have a 48 volt supply, so I've just tied two 20 volt, four volt uh, supplies together. Um, and it more than doubles the rate of speed of the ball screws. Nice, and then we have the, this enclosure here. Is this? This is good? CASA. Oh, yeah. CASA, that's right, yes. Yeah, so. Now, is this something you're gonna hopefully be offering in the future? So because right now is it self-sourcing, right? It's, it's, it's self-sourced right now. LDO has a kit ready the issue is it's quite a big machine yes right it's quite a big enclosure it's a big box with yeah. these big panels in uh it. ldo doesn't know if they're gonna sell it as a as a an item that you can just go into a store and buy it's going to be more of a you have to ask them specifically to send it to you okay yeah um that might change it might not we don't know the nice thing about miley is because it's the table is fixed uh it takes up 200 millimeters less in total width Okay. So you don't have to have as big as a CASA for it to fit in. So, because I have a Milo V1.5, yes. if I wanted to convert it to a Miley here just for like the bed, is that what would be involved for that? So, because that, from just looking at it, that seems to be like the one thing I would, depending on what you're machining, you would may want to do the most. So, unfortunately, because it's a major revision, there's no upgrade path to it. There is no upgrade. Okay. There, this has been a, a bit of a toss and turn for us because we, to us, we've been supporting through from V1.3 all the way to the V1.5. Yeah. We've had all that support, but the project's only been popular from V1.5 onwards. Okay. So what we've said is as a midpoint, we're going to use some of the tricks we learned from V2 to create a V1.6 later this year. That's going to use something like the new plates, the new Easy Tram uh, Z axis, some of the okay. stuff. We're going to tra transfer as much as we can into an upgrade path for V1.6 so that we're not leaving the people who okay. have already integrated into the okay. Milo firmware. Yeah, because there, there, there's pros and cons to both methods. Yeah, exactly. either, you either keep supporting legacy stuff, which can make some people happy, but then you're tied to those old design constraints. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, and then what is this big, big chungus thing so here? So this is Atlas. So Atlas is going to be an ongoing project for us. Uh, unlike Milo, which is normally gets finished first, then released to the public, this is going to be a live development thing. Okay. Right? So you're going to be able to have your input on what I do. This machine is going to be massive. Yeah, right? th these are some chonky extrusions. Yeah, we're estimating anywhere above 100 kilos total of machine. Oh yes. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a bed slinger style CNC, right? That's the easiest way I can put it. But it's gonna be in a almost pseudo arcade cabinet style form factor. Okay. So you're gonna be able to uh, roll this through a door it, it, if you want to put on wheels or whatever. Roll this through any normal door, set it in place, get working on it, and it will be it'll just slay things. The the reason we're doing it like that, VMCs are optimized geometry wise because yeah. no matter where the Z axis travels, it's always got the same leverage uh, across the whole of its travel. Whereas on a gantry style machine, or a fixed gantry style machines, every time you lower the Z, that lever is getting longer and longer and longer. The longer you make that lever, the more force gets put on it. We're getting over that limitation by making it big as. Right, that he valid. hence the uh, HDR20 rails, the big aluminium plates, the um, 1204 ball screws, all that kind of stuff. Weirdly enough, I actually think that this, because these components are more easily accessible to the everyday hobbyist, I actually think this will be in the same ballpark as a V2 will be. In terms of cost? Or in terms of cost. Okay. Wow, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, just because it's so... The, 
the main thing, the main expensive thing is the extrusions on this. Okay, so you're going to a more less needing machine components and trying to use more off the shelf kind of stuff? Try, there's, there's definitely gonna be machine components in there. Uh, we've, I've kind of set a, a vague limit of it needs to be machinable on a V2. Okay. Yeah, uh, for the big parts. This plate here obviously won't fit on a V2, so that part is actually meant to be machined in situ. So oh, once okay. the machine is so assembled, hand pop in a few holes to mount it and let the machine do the rest. Yes, kind of thing? exactly, nice. exactly. Uh, so that fits exactly two of our new fixated V2 plates. Um, so side by side. So it's exactly double what V2 would be. So this is the plate for the Miley there. For Miley and Milo. And Milo. Okay. Yeah. So this is exactly the same size as the work envelope for Milo. The reason we did it like that is versus what we did on old Milo where we had it cover the whole bed is it's just cheaper to do it like this and you don't need to to you don't need to put things in places that they won't be working hard enough. Yep. And then what is what is this here? So, so we had some feedback from builders, right? A lot of what V2 is is quality of life improvements. One of the big ones was people didn't know whether or not their X and Y axis was perpendicular to each other. Yep. And if you don't have a perpendicular X and Y axis, you get skew cuts. So we developed a way to register off of pins. This is actually something that the Pantheon guys do. Um, so that the carriages are always perpendicular to each other. So you only need to do the two carriages on either side of each rail. And they, then you remove these pins and remove these screws and it should mean that your axes will then travel perpendicular to each other without very much effort. You don't have to take like a dial indicator out and dial everything in and do all the, the tedious process that takes years to learn. So this will make assembly a lot easier and a lot less do. complicated. It should do. There was a lot of mods that went into V1.5. So the, the FMJs that are, they, they're seen as a standard. Those are a mod originally. The HOIs that are in the spindle, the, the aluminum spindle mounts, those are seen as mods on V1.5. We've integrated them as proper things in V2, okay. right? So V2 has, the, has four options of spindle mount, uh, two printed for a 65 millimeter and an 80 millimeter, and then two that are just used as shrouds to cover up some aluminum mounts. The reason we're using custom made aluminum mounts is it means that we can actually, we can more precisely guide to where the spindle center will be. Whereas if you're using an off the shelf one, they're gonna be thicker in, in some spaces, thinner in others. Yep. We can't guarantee that you'll get the full, um, the full workspace area the whole time. You can obviously mount it with whatever mount you want, but that works too. Oh, RepRap firmware. Moss, which is our plugin for RepRap firmware, has been made a lot easier. Before you had a few issues installing it, now all you need to do is take a zip file, stick it on an SD card, it'll work. Awesome. It will run your setup wizard. We've integrated probing into it. So it has all the CAN cycles for probing integrated into it. It can, it has uh, safe movements. So if you accidentally hit the probe too early into something, it will cancel all movements except movements away from the part. Oh, okay, so if you accidentally left something on the bed or yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it makes it so that you have a much harder time of running um, your spindle, your probe into something that you don't want to run into, stuff yeah. like that. Probes tend to break when you do yeah. that. We've also included rotation compensation. So if you don't know how to properly tram in a part in a vise, all you need to do is run a tool setter, run the CAN cycle that we have installed for you, and it will automatically morph the G-code. Oh, nice. To be able to run uh, in perfect um, axes with the other, with the other, with the So essentially, itself. for those from the 3D printing background, you've got bed leveling on the actual thing yes, you're machining. Yes, exactly. Nice. So there's, there's loads of little features from Retro Firmware that have been added on top of that. Awesome. Uh, it's a bit too much to talk about just now. But, uh, but if you're involved in this, you'll, you'll yeah. see it and you'll appreciate yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. Awesome. There, there's loads of small bits that I've left out, but again, not big enough to put into the video. Awesome. Cheers. No worries. Well, it, it's really cool to see what you guys have been working on. I have a Milo V1.5 at home. It'd be cool to do some of the upgrades to it, and I'm hoping I can get it set back up because I've got the new board for it that I want to put in it. Yeah. So appreciate it, Jake. Uh, no worries. Cheers. Yeah, compared to a port zero,
Mm-hmm.